I'm Gary Penn. I'm the designer and director at Denki Limited in Dundee, Scotland. <laughs> My starting point when we start a new game varies. I mean, it depends on who the customer is, whether that's an external customer, uh, so we've done work for Sky, for example, over the years, uh, or whether even if we're doing something internally for ourselves, we, we always have uh, and identify an audience. We like to know the audience, even if it's me uh, personally doing it, I like to know who, who I'm targeting. It's better if you can externalize that audience because then you have a sort of direct relationship with them and you can provide feedback. Uh, they can provide feedback. You can watch them in action. Uh, and it, uh, it can't be underestimated how important it is to see people using your stuff uh, and reacting to it. So the starting point, um, it could be uh, a brand. So in which case I would, I would sort of research the hell out of the brand uh, to the point where even if I don't like the brand, by the end of it, I do like the brand. But if it's an original title, you're trying to find appropriate references, pertinent references. So with uh, Quarrel, for example, that's a, a hybrid of, a, primarily a hybrid of, of two types of game, which is a word game like Scrabble or a sort of a strategy war game like Risk. So uh, we were looking at, at those types of games and, and sort of trying to learn uh, what works and what doesn't work within those types of games. But equally, all sorts of other things, uh, in terms of themes, for example, when you're trying to um, drill down on, on a particular theme for where you're playing, the playscape, uh, or what you're playing with in terms of the toys you're playing with, and uh, other things like the accessories, the power-ups, and whatever you might be playing with, you're generally trying to research uh, both the, the breadth of other people's work in a similar field, uh, but not necessarily games, it can always work outside of that. So it could be TV programs, comic books, uh, game shows, sports, um, a huge, huge sort of breadth. But I like to do a really quite intense uh, research phase at the beginning of the project. How do I know which ideas to throw away? You twofold. One comes from experience where you, you just know things won't work, uh, but mainly comes from testing them out. I like to, to prototype as quickly as possible. and. Generally, that means using whatever's established, whatever's available. Um, I'm a big believer in, the, in the, the sort of notion of repertoire. So in as much as actors, chefs, musicians, they have this body of, of kind of known experience that they can draw on at any point, uh, we do a similar sort of thing. So we'll, we'll be reusing any tools, any systems, any processes, uh, cards, bits of paper, anything to get something up and running as quickly as possible. And the sooner you can test these sort of ideas out, the better. They do need to be um, framed appropriately. So we, we also use things called guiding lights, which are where we identify, say, 10 key things that we're trying to achieve with, with the game in question. Uh, and then we'll have a top three or top five that we really absolutely must hit. And we can use those as a constant measurement against uh, some of the ideas that we're trying out. And we also use a, a methodology called the end, which is where we're trying to maximize uh, five key, key uh, pillars, which are convenience, uh, twist, drama, alive, and feel. Uh, and we can measure everything against those. So with a particular feature, for example, if things aren't working with it, it could be because it's not convenient enough, as in maybe it's to do with the information we're providing isn't clear enough, so the player has no idea what's going on, and so we can, we can usually use those to, to figure out, ah, right, that's why that's not working. Um, but you do hit a kill or cure point, and uh, the, the, the more often you can hit those points, the better. So we, we also try to produce uh, something as quickly as possible, as regularly as possible. Not too quick that you end up sort of painting yourself into a corner, but not so sort of drawn out and, and over-prepared that you actually end up going nowhere. So that degree of sort of rapid accountability with somebody uh, allows you to sort of make assessments about, well, is that, do we kill it or cure it? Well, I mean, technology's come along insanely in the last three or four years alone with, with a lot of the touchscreen devices. And the, the degree of um, power you have in your pocket these days, it's kind of reached the point where the platform doesn't really have as much value as it had. And we're going to end up with the being able to play the same stuff everywhere. However, there's always going to be this problem with touchscreen devices having a, a touchscreen, mouse-based devices having a mouse, keyboard devices, and, and buttons. It'll come down to that degree of preference. So you've got to bear all these things in mind. It's as simple as that. Um, so with something like the iOS, the iPhone, and the iPad, you're looking at a device where there is a certain expectation with, with the player, where they expect to be able to do things in a certain way. So with a game like Quarrel, 
uh, it was originally conceived on uh, an, an, an Xbox, which has a, a very distinctive set of sticks and buttons to, to maneuver things with. If we'd just simply sort of done a virtual version of that and duplicated it, it, it just wouldn't have worked. And also the, the players of those devices would have expected something more. So they expect sort of touch, tilt, pinch. There are certain things they expect. They expect a degree of convenience that they're used to with the device. So it's not the technology per se that, that needs to be considered anymore. It's, it's the effects of the technology. So like yeah, touch screen devices, this degree of connectivity, the fact that the cloud is so much more prevalent, uh, prevalent than, than ever before. Um, people are, are also changing their taste in, in the way they play games. So you get uh, a lot of older gamers like me uh, who are similar to a lot of newer gamers where they, they just haven't got time. They don't really care. They're just after a quick fix and the iPhone and so on have come along and, and kind of filled that space. But equally, you still get those sort of harder core gamers who are after that bigger, almost theatrical uh, experience. Um, and there's a different degree of sort of technical considerations there. Certainly when I started playing games, it was, it was a very uh, nerdy thing to do, whereas these days it's just another thing to do, which is fantastic. So it's becoming uh, an increasingly part of our day-to-day our -day, uh, culture. And also play, uh, Neoten is more prevalent. That's the, the retention of uh, juvenile traits into adulthood, that, that the kid alt, that's, that's becoming more prevalent. So people are, are younger for longer, uh, so they're more playful for longer. So the fact that we've got play becoming more of a, of a means of expression and will become more of a means of expression, again, that's, that's something I find particularly interesting about the, the industry. I'd like to see a movement more of, towards repertoire, uh, more to, towards Having more standardized uh, practices, terminology, taxonomy, um, methods. I mean, we still don't really understand what we're doing. We just do it. And it, I think every game I've ever worked on or been associated with or seen, it's very unusual unless it's a sequel that people um, don't end up reinventing the wheel or, or building every, everything from the ground up every single time. So. I would like more repertoire. It, it, it's a pretty much still, even with the advent of, of middleware becoming more popular, a lot of tools and methods that didn't exist do exist now. It makes it far easier to get stuff made than ever before, which is fantastic. But there's still a lot more that can be done to advance that. So you know, moving away from having to effectively make your camera, make your film, uh, make your paper, make your ink, just to get started, let alone express yourself, we're still way short of that. And we don't have these tools readily available from the outset.